What's up and welcome back to Beat Goblin. Today we're making music from scratch on Flip Sampler, Andrew Huang's music production app. I have watched a tutorial going in, but I've not used it a ton. So this is going to be a fairly initial impressions type video. So grab your matcha or caffeinated beverage of choice and get comfortable. Let's make some beats. All right, let's start off by loading in some sounds. And I should mention, this is not my iPad. I'm borrowing it from a family member uh, to try out the iPad music production thing before either deciding to take the plunge or deciding that it's not worth it for me. So I'm just dipping my little toes in. So I want to start off with some Rachel K. Collier sounds. This big old bass. That's fun. Some Foley. And I'm going to start off by building this kit up in the way that I would on, say, my MPC or machine or something like that. We'll see, that's a chunky kick. And I typically like to have my sample types separated out by columns. Sure, we'll go with that one. I actually want to go back to this control pack because I want some vocals. Yeah. Let's do that. So I need some kind of bass. Let's start with that and then go from there. Yeah. So I'm actually going to keep this window open because I want to shape yeah. these a bit. First of all, I want to turn this down a little bit, I think. So let's tap out a tempo. Okay, so on the envelope front, that's fine. I'm going to cut off the attack of this. And I might try to layer these together. So I want this one to ring out for its full duration. Some effects, maybe? Too much. So one thing I'm noticing through no fault of the app, this is an iPad thing. Listen to uh, the delay between hitting a note and it triggering. I'm going to move my mic in. So finger drumming on this thing feels a little bit like running through water. There's just that kind of resistance. It's fine. I can get used to it. You know, stuff gets quantized. It'll sound fine in the end. It's a trade-off you have to make. But for me, I really notice this kind of stuff because of, you know, two decades of playing drums will do that to you. Well. I love that it shows you which ones are playing when. That's very visual. In fact, this whole thing is very visual. This is clearly informed by Andrew's experience with the OP1, but then trying to take that and make it a lot cleaner. And I really like the visual feedback that this gives you. So let's click in a note. Let's extend it out. That's what I wanted. Let's do a little volume control. So where's that other kick come from? Because I like this as my big punchy one. And this one's to add some texture. And then as far as I know, it auto saves, as far as I could tell. So that's where the iPad's latency really kicks in. But it handled it, so we've got that going for us. Messing with the velocity might be kind of fun. So I just want to have one repeating cycle. We zoom, we set this to one bar, we go to our velocity. Oh, you know what? Let's not do velocity, let's just do straight up. Okay, then. That's not what I meant to do at all. That was a little strange. What I want to do is automate volume. And I want it to be this short little clip of automation. Here we go. That's what I wanted. So now we got some some feel. Maybe we mess around with the pitch a little bit. <laughs> Chunk. All right, so preemptively, I'm going to extend this pattern out to eight bars, and I think that should be plenty for this simple ass bass line I'm about to play. Let's just go for it. Mm. 
not art, but <laughs> you see, I flubbed that note. So let's fix that. I don't think I need to zoom in more to change my quantization. There we go. And so that was only four bars. So we can go ahead and just trim this after the fact. So it's a bit loud. You know what we could do? Because I'm doing a four on the floor kick, we could actually automate this volume to just fake a side chain. We could also reverb this a bit. Ooh. We might also have to bit crush something. I wish this had a distortion in it. Like, not a bit crusher, but a distortion, because uh, I'm a dirty little simp for distortion. But we'll work with what we got. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. And I could probably make that more intense. So have it dip down lower, but jump back up faster. Yoinkus. That actually hella brought it to life. We can work with this. I really wish I could make this kick a little louder. I feel like maybe this layer is dragging us down a little bit. I think it needs just a little bit of help. Just bink it right there. Let's just cut some lows. We don't need it to provide bass. Okay, so let's unsolo that. I've realized I can crank the gain on this. <laughs> Gabe over compressed Miller over here. Yeah. All right. And then maybe we do an octave down one. This is like dead simple, but it's fun. Damn it. It's fun. And while we're at it, let's mess with our maximizer. Oh, that's a little better. So in that case, that's better. That hi-hat needed to come down. And maybe that reverb could embiggen a little bit. Yeah, that reverb's doing the most. So let's select our yeah. vocal and process it a bit. <laughs> Ping pong you. That's probably a little too much. Nope. So let's go to our pattern. Boink this out. That will work. <laughs> that sounds a little odd, but we can do some automation to make this work. That's fine. I do quite like the EQ here. So just like roll off some extra highs. Just push it in the background. So it just floats over the top. So this is still not art, but we're getting somewhere. So by the way, we've probably cut a lot of this in post, but I'm just doing some like basic mixing to try to uh, clean up some mud. All 
Have we made it better? Not really. I guess marginally. All right, I think I've spent enough time on this beat. Let's move on. New project. All right, so let's take this in a bit of a different direction. Who's a good shocky kick? Oh, I kind of want to use that hi-hat. So I think this one has a pretty good... Oh, that's fun. We're definitely using that. Is this the same uh, hat we used in the last one? Yeah, I think it's got to be this one. So I now need a short, stabby little snare. Also, you can load your own samples into this. I just have not yet bothered to do so. Ooh, this is nice. That's real nice. See, this is the one we used last time, so let's not use the same one again. Let's... See, this is cuckoo stuff, I think. See, cuckoo. Can we turn you into vapor trap? Can we... Is that a thing that we can do? Woo! So, uh, maybe we just use up, like, all of our sample slots. <laughs> maybe that's the way forward here. What if we just try it? Because this could actually be dope. All right, Cuckoo, we're turning you into Vapor Trap. I hope you can vibe with that. That doesn't leave me any room for bass, does it? I'm going to have to be real choosy with my samples here. I wish that you could go full circuit rhythm slash digitact so on and so forth, pick your monophonic sampler of choice. I wish you could um, switch between multiple samples on one track. That would be sick. Or if we had like mute groups, I think I'm just going to do this via like a really short envelope and that'll be totally fine. But uh, hey, I can dream, can't I? So what about... See, I think I need an 808. That actually might be too intense, but uh, it also might just be just intense enough. So, unfortunately, we might have to uh, get a different sound for this. Okay, not claps, maybe snares. Give me a short, stabimus maximus snare. Yep. Stop! Stop! <laughs> it's still going! Cool. That seems about right. We could almost tempo match the sample, but I'm going to record these in first and then try to dial in the tempo. I think that could be cool. God, this clap is just disgusting. I love it. So I want my kick track to be two bars long. I immediately want to crank the game on this one. So we'll do the 808 last to kind of follow these samples. And I might do some filtering to these after the fact. I think that might be kind of dope. We'll get there. So that's going to be an eight bar loop. So what I need to do is make all of these samples, make their respective tracks all eight bars long. Let me just double check that I know how to count. Oh, I do. Never mind. You get an eight bars and you get an eight bars. Whoopsies. So for the, the kind of way that I'm used to making vapor trap and hip hop style beats, there is definitely some friction associated with this, but um, we're getting there. This freaking timing mismatch is going to be the death of me. Once again, I think that's an iPad problem and it might just be a this iPad problem. I genuinely don't know. Answers in the comments or on a postcard or a carrier pigeon or something. Hear that little kind of pumping? We could totally match that. I think we could do that. I think that would be neat. There we go. So what I think might be dope here is to pull up our sample window again. Let's go to effects. Right off the bat, let's chorusify it. Let's delayify it a little bit. Let's pongify it. Let's do the same. And just kind of generally match these settings. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second. Now I want to turn on the filter for all these. This is going to take a bit of extra effort because this might not quite fit with the workflow that was intended, but damn it, it's going to be cool. Yep. 
this is finna work. So we've cranked the resonance to varying degrees on all of these. Now let's go into automation. So that's going to be this here, automate you. Let me uh, make sure this is on the first chord stab. So that's going to be this track one right here. Filter, frequency. So that's just going to affect the first chord. So then we do basically the exact same thing for all of these. And when it's done, it will sound neat. And I'm also planning to send this to the reverb in a second. And I think that will give us adequate vibes. Behold, the smoothest automation curve ever drawn by humans. A work of beauty, never to be topped. One, two, five, eight is what I want. One, two, five, eight. And then we adjust the reverb. Ooh. I'm pushing this pretty hard. Yikes. So I might want to reduce the gain on a bunch of stuff because I think I'm starting to cause problems. You know what's happening? I think it's probably just like hella overemphasizing those low frequencies. And I think that's where my clipping's coming from. So why don't we just clean up that mud, just scoop it. Or maybe I'm sending it to too much reverb. Yoinkus, yoinkus. Yoinkus and Bolinkus. Why is it doing that? See, that's not good. That's bad, in fact. Oh, see, that's better. So we're just going to totally earball this uh, 808 here. And I am going to extendify this out to eight bars. I think this 808 might actually be a little bit too uh, chunky for this. Why is that gain up so high? We should absolutely just crank this release. I think that might help us here. And then we should uh, turn that way the hell down because I think we're about to just destroy all our headroom. My EQ is still a little off, but we'll fix that in a second once I can actually hear the entire part. I do kind of like these chill floaty chords over the top of this just kind of angry 808. That's fun. I'm still not quite feeling that EQ. Okay, so I missed that first note somehow. Let's fix that. So I think we need to pull these up an octave. That's so nice, the way that it scoots. That's clean AF. It's a little hard to tell which note it's getting dropped on, but I like that you can grab them as one big block of notes. There we go. So one more thing I want to do for this beat, and then I'll probably export these stems and work with them a bit in Reaper. Um, and that's the version that you probably heard in the intro, because I think this beat's a lot better than the first one. It's not fireworks, but it's fine. I'm still getting the hang of this thing, obviously, but let's get some hi-hat rolls in here. So right there. Oh, so you know what I want to do right now? This is a, a nice feature that we're about to make use of. I'm going to select all of these. Come on, do the thing. There we go. So I'm going to duplicate and it'll immediately, in this case, double the length of my pattern. Now I select all these again. It doesn't always seem to want to do it. Thank you. So this is the note where I would like to insert a hi-hat roll. I think it's this one where I want to add my other hi-hat roll. Boom, 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 boom. So now 
we can insert some very precise surgical pitch automation right here. I'm assuming this is like, so now I'm just trial and erroring it through. <laughs> That's okay. So I actually need to extend this out to four bars. And then I need to find where my other hi-hat roll is. Let's try that. Nice, there we go. That's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and export those stems, bring them into Reaper, and then go from there. Um, a few thoughts after spending a pretty solid hour with the app making two beats from scratch on camera. I like it, but I've got some uh, reservations. First of all, I want to be very clear. I have a huge amount of respect for Andrew Huang and the incredible music YouTube career he's had so far. He's been a huge inspiration for me for years. So everything I'm saying is with the utmost respect. And I love the design of this app. The user interface is clearly very well thought out and it's graphically really nice and there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here and I think this could grow into something really amazing. But my experience has not been without bugs. I've had some issues with weird latency and sounds not triggering all the time and it's possible that all of this is the fault of the iPad that I'm using and none of it's the fault of the app but I just I had some rough edges to my experience still. It didn't feel crazy polished but it's very promising. So I don't think I'm going to switch to an iPad for music production yet, but I picked up the user interface for Flip Sampler very fast. And that's always a great sign. And I didn't need a ton of instruction before I was able to just dive into it and start working on tunes. It's got some limitations that I think could be improved. I'd love to see things like filter envelopes or switching between multiple sounds on one track, but I'm sure that's all stuff that could be expanded or you could just kind of take it for what it is and go from there. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more music production videos, you can click or tap up over here, some more beat making from scratch for you to check out. And I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.